When it comes to camera gear, you often get what you pay for, or at least that was the case up until a few years ago before third-party companies started to produce affordable yet high-quality optics. This concept has even crept into the cinema lens market, and all of a sudden, two words that were seemingly opposites could not be closer than ever. Budget anamorphics. I'm David, and this is the whole picture. If you're not familiar with TTRs, and they've been making high quality yet affordable manual focus lenses since 2019, which I found particularly useful when it comes to video production on crop sensor cameras. The new TTRs in 25mm T2 and a Morphot Cine lens, seemingly based on the existing 25mm F2 photo lens, now brings that concept to a whole new level and really sparked my interest when it popped up suddenly with little fanfare here in Japan. So, what's the difference between these two lenses? For starters, the new Anamorphot has been given a CineLens style treatment with a new housing, an 11 blade declicked aperture compared to the stepped 7 blade aperture on the original, as well as focus and aperture gears. But beyond that, what really separates the Anamorphot from the original 25mm and other budget lenses is thanks to the addition of two extra pieces of glass that make this an anamorphic lens. Very basically, anamorphic glass squeezes more horizontal visual information onto your camera sensor, which at first may look strange like a funhouse mirror, but when that image is stretched or de-squeezed in post, you're left with a wider aspect ratio and effectively an increase in resolution. More practically speaking, anamorphic lenses allow users to achieve a widescreen aspect ratio without the need to crop your image. So, a 25mm anamorphic lens, like this one from TT Artisan, captures a wider field of view compared to a standard or spherical 25mm lens that has been cropped to match the same aspect ratio. But anamorphics go well beyond just aspect ratio and lend a special visual language and distinct character to the images that they capture and have become associated with the blockbuster movies that utilize these lenses. With that basic explanation of anamorphics out of the way, let's talk about the TT Artisan T2 anamorphot in more detail. Designed for APS-C or Super 35, it's currently available in Sony E-mount as well as Fuji X-mount. And your camera doesn't need any special features or anamorphic modes to take advantage of this lens. The magic is in the optics, and while anamorphic modes or field monitors can aid in the creative process, they're not necessary for this lens. More on that later. Global pricing and availability for the TT Artisan 25mm T2 have not been published as of the making of this video, but based on prices here in Japan, it could very well come in at under $400 US, making it one of the cheapest anamorphic cine lenses to date. While that is all very exciting, I've covered some budget anamorphic solutions on this channel in the past, and they often felt compromised to achieve special use cases or lower budgets. So, at first, I was very skeptic as to whether TT Artisan could deliver true anamorphic character at this low price point. But after using it for a few days, I have been pleasantly surprised by not only the user experience, but also the results. Like the original and also most modern lenses, I found the 25mm anamorphic to be sharp and contrasty, suitable for probably all but the most demanding projects. And like many other budget anamorphics, the horizontal anamorphic flares also tend to be sharp, thin, and saturated, in this case blue streaks. But it depends on how it catches the light. In general, I found that the flare was not unruly and needs a strong direct light source to become prominent in the image. Interestingly, certain light sources can also cause a sunburst style flare that becomes more of a sun star as you stop down, and this also often accompanies the anamorphic flares. Horizontally, this lens produces an angle of view very similar to that of a 28mm on full frame. So while versatile, it is on the wider side and does exhibit anamorphic distortion, where the image can feel slightly warped forward and lines can appear to bow towards the camera depending on the situation and settings. This is normal and in some cases actually sought after when it comes to choosing anamorphics. The TT Artisan distortion is more on the subtle side, but still enough to set it apart from traditional spherical lenses. Speaking of distortion, due to the optical design, elements on the edges of the frame can appear different than elements in the middle of the frame, something you can more easily observe when introducing movement like a camera pan or a subject walking across the frame. Once again, this is a characteristic of anamorphic lenses and can add to the visual language of your project when used effectively. 
Another unique anamorphic characteristic that's easily recognized would have to be the focus breathing. With the TTRs in, racking focus causes the frame to shift to a degree that elements on the edge of the frame might appear or disappear, like in this example. This is all very characteristic of anamorphic lenses, but one area I found the TT artisan lacking in was the rendering of out-of-focus elements. Blur is not exactly the dream-like rendering many might picture when talking about anamorphics, and at the same time, bokeh is not exactly circular like we see on traditional spherical lenses, but it's also not an oval shape which has become a hallmark of anamorphic lenses. This is partly due to the square front optical design, but also in part due to the squeeze ratio. In many ways, the TTRs and 25mm T2 Anamorphot offers a lot of anamorphic characteristics and cine-style features for newcomers to experiment and learn with. It's truly a great value for money, offering cinema-style features, a sharp image, fast aperture, all in a tiny package that weighs about 300 grams. This would make it a fantastic spherical lens, but the fact that it's also an anamorphic lens is pretty wild. But in many ways, you also do get what you pay for here. The lenses used in Hollywood cost upwards of 10 times the TT Artisan, and often for good reason. One of them being the squeeze ratio, or how much more information is captured horizontally, with higher ratios typically rendering more pronounced anamorphic characteristics but also at the cost of more demanding manufacturing requirements, with the Hollywood standard being a 2x squeeze. But we also now have a variety of ratios, including 1.8, 1.6, and 1.5 to name a few, which can offer a nice balance of anamorphic character with price and size for modern pros and consumers alike. So 1.33x is on the lower side, which means anamorphic characteristics might not always meet your expectations. But at the same time, the choice to go with 1.33 is most likely how TT Artisan managed to deliver one of the cheapest and smallest anamorphic cine lenses to date. Beyond the price and size, I think this is a great entry point into anamorphics because it works right out of the box, at least technically. No need for adapters or clamps like with a custom rig, and as I mentioned earlier in the video, you don't need a camera with anamorphic modes or separate accessories like a monitor to use the lens. 1.33x is in many ways beginner friendly, and with a little bit of practice, I think most users will find it easy enough to frame shots with the image slightly squeezed in camera. In fact, that's how I've been using this lens for the most part. But what's great about the TT Artisan is that it has built-in focus gears and standard filter threads, so if you get more serious about filmmaking or need to film something more complex, it's easy to integrate it into a rig to suit different situations. On that note, I did want to mention a few things for advanced users. The TT Artisan 25mm Anamorphot seems to implement a synchro style focus system, and the front of the lens does not rotate or telescope during focusing. So using specialty filters should be no problem, and budget matte boxes like those from Tilta are easy to use. But the outer diameter seems to be of a non-standard size, so clip-on style cinema accessories may be more challenging to use. And thankfully, the use of a filter, even a thicker variable ND or diopters, don't seem to the vignette for 16x9 or 17x9 acquisition. That being said, I've been testing the lens on Fujifilm's X-H2S with the open gate 2x3 mode, and when filming a bright scene like a white wall, if you look closely enough, you might be able to see dark corners ever so slightly creeping into the frame. This is without any accessories in front of the lens and with the image stabilization turned off. But honestly, it was something that almost went unnoticed in my testing, and even after realizing this, I still continued to film everything in 2x3 open gate, which with the 1.33 anamorphic gives you an almost 2 to 1 aspect ratio when de-squeezed. This is one of the areas where the language or standards behind anamorphics can become a little confusing, even for those with experience. But simply put, in the modern day, anamorphic lenses are not necessarily tied to any specific sensor size or aspect ratio like they may have been in the film days. There are of course standards for distribution, but those can be ignored for creative effect, or one can choose to film in a non-standard aspect ratio during acquisition, which allows for reframing during post-production, even if you are going to be distributing in a standard widescreen aspect. In general, between the ability to get a good feel for framing in camera and the tiny size of the lens, I didn't really find myself reaching for a rig or field monitor in my casual use. Even the focus throw, while longer than the spherical version of the 25mm, is still only about 90 degrees, so very manageable without a follow focus in many cases. If you do intend to use a follow focus unit, 
you might need to make some compromises to line up the gears properly, as the focus ring sits very close to the lens mount. It's probably fine for most situations, but I can see it affecting specific use cases and rigs, so I thought it was worth mentioning. But ultimately, I feel a little bit awkward recommending this lens for a few reasons unrelated to its quality. At the time of this video, there's very little information out there, but all the sales pages in Japan claim this lens to be a limited run of 200 units, with no further details as to how many lenses are in Fuji X mount or Sony E mount. In fact, not only does the lens not feature a limited edition numbering system like 1 out of 200, but I could not find a serial number anywhere not on the lens mount, or barrel, or in the box. Making the issue more confusing, in the manual, Micro Four Thirds is mentioned as a mounting option. The lens cap is also very generic and cheap compared to the more premium and branded caps on other TTRs and lenses. It all feels just a little bit off to me. It makes this lens seem more like a proof of concept, and I don't have any evidence to back this up, but it's not too much of a stretch to see TTRs and mass produce a slightly different version of this lens, Maintaining the limited nature of this current version while having tested the waters before dedicating to bigger production plans. If that does become the case, I really wish there was more transparency from the start. Even information on future plans to produce other focal lengths would have been very much appreciated. But as is, a limited run of 200 lenses in one focal length is very niche and the potential for it to end at that makes it difficult for me to recommend it wholeheartedly other than as a fun lens to use casually. But let me know what you think about this and if the TT Artisan and Morphot is available or marketed differently in your country. And if the situation does change, I will be updating the description of this video, but in many ways I feel like this is part of that you get what you pay for mentality and it goes beyond the build quality or image quality. Anyways, I'm David and this is the whole picture.